This is Sky Cam from Channel 11 News reporting to you live over the valley. For those of you heading south on I-15 on your commute home from work, expect some delays around the 215 interchange. Road crews are making repairs on the left lane, so commuters should be prepared to shift over to the right around 7200 south. This bottleneck appears to clear up around 9600 south. You should expect such delays at least until the end of the week. Northbound I-15 looks good until you reach around 3300 south. Minor fender bender perhaps resulting from poor visibility out there as traffic backed up a mile or so. Also, some reports have come in on patches of black ice on roads in that area. Forecasters predict sporadic freezing rain later into the night and early morning hours. And one more note, the frigid temperatures and heavy snow in the mountains have forced a herd of elk down into Riverside Park. So extreme caution should be taken if you're traveling around in that area. And that's all from Sky Cam 11, providing you with traffic updates on the hour. Okay, may I see your driver's license, please? What? Did I do anything wrong? License, please, and your car registration. Oh, yeah. It's uh, somewhere here in the glove compartment. Yeah, here it is. Sir, did you realize you were speeding in a school zone? What? No, I didn't. That's probably because my odometer is broken. Uh, I mean, malfunctioning. Yes, you were going 50 miles per hour in a 20 miles per hour zone. And... What? And you failed to come to a complete stop at the intersection back there. Rolling stops don't count? And one of your brake lights is out. Huh. And you're not wearing a seatbelt. Mm. And your driver's license expired six months ago. And your name is... Officer Smith. Yeah. Hey, are you related to the Smiths in town? Well... My wife's cousin husband, I think his name is Fred, works for the police department here. Or was that the fire department? Anyway, I thought you might be good pals and, you know... Hey, are you trying to influence an officer? <laughs> I could have this car impounded right here because of these infractions. No, of course not. Okay, then. Here's your ticket. You can either appear in court to pay the fine or mail it in. And have a nice day. You take cash? Hi, Bob. Did you talk to all of the witnesses to the car accident? The old lady was standing on the street corner when the accident happened. She said that it was the red car's fault. She said the red car was driving very fast, then quickly stopped when the traffic light changed. What did the kids say? The kids were playing in their front yard when they heard the crash. They say they didn't see anything. Did the neighbor see anything? The neighbor, Mr. Jones, was working in his yard when the accident happened. He said that he thought he saw a dog run out to the street in front of the car. Hmm. No one else mentioned a dog. Did you talk to Mr. Bates? Mr. Bates? Yeah, he's the man who was selling newspapers on the street corner. Oh, yeah. He says that it was the blue car's fault. Really? Yeah. He says that the man in the blue car wasn't paying attention. When the red car stopped, he didn't notice until it was too late. He hit the red car. Wow. Did they all see the same accident? They all remember something different. Yeah, I know. Pretty strange, huh? Well, put it all in the report.
One. Are you going to take the bus downtown, or are you going to take your bike? I think there's too much traffic on the road today to go by bike. It's not safe to ride in traffic. I guess there's so much traffic because of the big football game. Well, look, I'm driving downtown. Can I give you a ride? Hey, thanks. So, do you use your bike very often? Not during the week, but I ride it pretty often on the weekend. Two. How are you going to get downtown? Are you going to drive? I don't think so. I just heard the traffic report on the radio. It seems there is a traffic jam on the freeway. They said a couple of buses have broken down. I guess it will be quicker to take the subway. Absolutely. Three. Gosh, I wonder how much longer we'll have to wait for a bus. We've waited half an hour already. Do you think we should go back and get the car? Oh no, I hate driving at night. Let's take a taxi. I don't want to be late for the movie. Good idea. I'll call for one on my cell phone. They usually come pretty quickly. Four. How are you going to get home from the restaurant on Sunday, Harry? Oh, I can just take a bus or a taxi. There are usually plenty of taxis around that area at night. Yes, but not on a Sunday night. You might wait for a long time. Why don't you ask Kevin to drive you home? He's having dinner with us, and he lives near you. That's right. I'll ask him. Five. What's the traffic like downtown today? It's pretty bad. One of the traffic lights is broken, so all the traffic is backing up. Oh, how should I get to my doctor's appointment? Drive? Take a taxi? A taxi won't be any faster than driving. Well then, I'll probably take the subway to the station and then walk from there. Yeah, today I think that's the fastest way. Six. How do you plan to get to your friend's house? Do you need a ride? How's the weather? It's really nice out. Oh, thanks anyway. But I'll ride my bike. I was going to take the bus, but I need to get some exercise. All right, but be careful of the traffic. One. In my town, public transportation was never very good. You had to drive everywhere, so there was always traffic. The government wanted to make public transportation easier than driving cars. They bought some nice new buses, for example, and they added air conditioning to the ones we already had. They also began offering lower bus fares on the weekends, so more people would be encouraged to try the new buses. They raised taxi fares too. I guess they figure that if taxis cost more, people might think about using buses more often. Two. Well, the problem was that thousands of people drove into the city center every day, and there weren't enough parking spaces. So the government wanted to make parking easier, but they didn't build more parking garages. Instead, they tried to keep cars out of the city center. Recently, they started making people who drive their cars downtown pay a daily fee. You have to pay ten dollars if you want to drive your car into the center between eight a.m. and six p.m. At the same time, they have raised the parking lot rates so people think twice before they drive their car into the city. Three. Traffic was a real problem around here. It moved so slowly. Last year, the government turned a bunch of streets downtown into one-way streets. This helped the traffic move more quickly. Special lanes on roads just for buses were built at the same time. If you are caught driving your car in a bus lane, you have to pay a fine, and it's a really high fine. Also, they passed a law last year that says you can only drive your car downtown three days a week. You have to display a special pass in your car that says which days you're allowed to drive downtown. Four. Air pollution in our city was a huge problem, and we really needed to lower it. I guess that's why the government started putting special bicycle lanes on the streets downtown. That way, people can ride their bikes to work instead of using their stinky cars.
They also made a rule that says there must be at least two people in your car if you want to drive downtown during the week. They also ordered these amazing new pollution-free buses. They use electricity, so they don't put anything bad into the air.